Hey mask nerds, welcome back to another mask review video. I got a whole bunch of masks to talk about today, also be covering some important topics. Top of the list is why I wear a KF94, and I think you should too. I'll also cover my top mask picks for right now. Uh, I'll talk about the future of mask wearing. I've seen some of the future and I like what I'm seeing. Um, I'm gonna cover what my test aerosol and my test apparatus compares to like the NIOSH test standard and to what we'd expect uh, respiratory droplets and respiratory aerosols and the size that they'd expect to. And how does my test kind of compare to that? I'll provide some examples. I'll also cover an FAQ about uh, what some, some common misno uh, misunderstandings and questions that people have about, about masks, like do they filter smells? Can you use the water test or blow out the candle test as a way to check mask quality? The answer is no. And should we sanitize masks? So we'll jump right into it. Why do I wear a KF94? And I think you should too. The KF94 is a, actually a Korean mask standard. Um, so I oftentimes refer to the boat style mask as a KF94. It's just kind of a general uh, colloquial term, but technically there are bifold styles as well. There's also a KF80 standard. Uh, the KF94 standard is a Korean general population mask standard, so it's not really an occupational mask like we would see with a NIOSH N95, but is designed around how would you mask up a population of people in the case of a pandemic. Kind of worked out well for them to be prepared. Uh, so the test standard, and I'll throw up a table here which highlights some of the, let's say the NIOSH N95, the FPP2, which is the European standard, as well as the um, KF94 standard, which oftentimes confuses the Korean first class, which is their occupational standard, their general population mass, the KF94 actually has a slightly reduced uh, total internal leakage, it's 11% versus 8% normally. So uh, it's not, is it quite at an N95 or FPP2? No, not quite, it's a little lower, but I think that they give you very close results. Why do I like that? Well, the Korean government actually requires mass manufacturers to have to go through a series of tests to certify their masks as being a KF94 certified mask. They actually have a website, the MFDS. I don't speak Korean and I don't have a Korean keyboard, I can't get all the symbols, but in theory, and some people have, you can actually go search that database and find, let's say like this is the LG Air Washer Basic, you can go find their certification and their test data for this mask which is excellent because that's the same thing we see with NIOSH. They have some really good quality controls at a government level in place ensuring that these are really good. I've also tested a lot of KF94s and I found them to all perform really well. I think this highlights because they have a really good test standard that they're held to. One of the important test standards I think that's included in it is called the total internal leakage. It's actually the very same test that I'm doing. They take a mask, they port, punch a port in it, they have a person go into a room, they fill that room with aerosol, and they measure the in-mask concentration, connecting it to the port just like I do, and measure the concentration inside the mask, as well as the out ambient concentration. So they're actually monitoring how well the mask is filtering all the time. And they have the, them do something, and they have, I think, believe 10 people that they have to test, or maybe more. I'll, I'll put a little star at the bottom. Uh, and they have them do activities. They have to walk on a treadmill. They have to move their head around. They have to look up and down. They have to talk for two minutes. And the entire time, they're monitoring the mask performance. And the requirement is that the mask cannot produce a filtration efficiency of less than 89%, or it won't pass this KF94 standard. So even though the KF94 is saying 95% filtration standard, I mean, it's kind of confusing, but effectively they're saying 94%, plus you can have a little bit of leakage, so your mask can never be worse than 89%. There's a little bit of nuance there. It turns out you can exclude some candidates, right? There's an algorithm to figure out whether exactly how it passes because some people can have a little bit lower. You can exclude a couple of test conditions to make it pass. But the point is that they're forced to test mass on a variety of face sizes to make sure that they work in a general population condition. Meaning just like in real life now, as we see a lot of people need to wear a mask and you need to make them fit. And so that's kind of this important thing is that there's this whole quality system and test methodology that's in place to ensure that you get a quality mask that you don't have to worry if you have a counterfeit. So if you're getting masks that are coming out of South Korea and they have the KF94, there's a very good probability that they're safe. I can't say the same for KN95s. You know, go to Amazon or eBay and sort by the cheapest. I'm sure you can find some fakes because there's not quite the quality control. So that's why I wear a KF94. I like the boat style for a lot of reasons. For if you're new to my channel, why do I like the boat style? I like the boat style because I can wear this mask and talk quite easily without having it pull down my nose. The extra flap on the bottom of the boat lets you talk and it doesn't pull down. I really like the boat style. I think it fits a variety of face sizes. Not everyone. I still have KN95 recommendations for people that I don't fit it very well. And some people prefer KN95s and I respect that and I'll try to test as many as I can as well. But in general, I found really good luck with the KF94 with a variety of face sizes and that's why I like them right now. Now that will change over time. So if you're watching this video in March or something, I might have a different recommendation, but that's where I'm at right now. My top pick for masks. So for small faces, I have some interesting options. Uh, if you're in the US, 
my top picks still remain the blue, uh, this is an English version package that I just tested. This is the blue 3D large mask. I think they call it blue bond. You can get this on Be Healthy. I think this mask fits a very good variety of face sizes. It's one of the smaller masks that you can get and that's about all I can have right now. There's still technically a large, so some people um, with smaller face sizes, you know, there's a there's a Dr. Peary medium. I'll be testing my next video, but so far this and the, the Bluna face fit still on my list, still like it. Good mask, good projection. You know, it's got a, it doesn't collapse. I, you know, I still think this is one of my favorite masks. It, even if it's me, it's a little smaller than the bottom for me, but you know, you don't get face collapse. It's black, so it gets that. It has adjustable ear loops, which I really like. Um, so those are still my top tips for small faces. For large faces, it has changed, but don't worry. It hasn't changed that much. If you have a really big face, and I think the bottom is the biggest. So if you have a really big face, we have a bottom black now. I'll review this later. Just like the white bottom, but it's black. Good stiff nose wire, adjustable ear loops. Ear loop design isn't as good as other masks, but I still like it. No, it's not bad. Um, <laughs> and I struggled to get this one on today for some reason, but it's a good mask. And I'm not editing this video, so even I sometimes struggle to get my mask on. There we go. Uh, good mask, I double ear loop just to make my life easier, but you do not have to double ear loop it. Uh, black mask, bottom, stiff outer layer, easy to breathe in. Uh, it's very big, so these are gonna be on the larger side. So if you got a really big base, I would start a big face, I would start at you know the bottom. If you don't have as big of a face, my next recommendation is the uh, LG Air Washer Basic. Now there's both a US source that I identified and a um, international source. I'll talk a little bit about that, but this is the LG Air Washer Basic, another great mask, soft inside. I think they're Dermatest approved, yep, which means that you know they're kind of highlighted to not cause um, facial irritation and stuff like that. I'm just going to throw them on the ground. Uh, and they also, one of the things I like this is like, I have a new column in my table. I uh, also be looking at um, stiffness of the nose wire and I call this one mega stiff because it's a, it's a compare, it's a, you know, a kind of comparison. I don't have a ton of science behind them, so I'm just kind of comparing them, but this one is super, super stiff. I like this one a lot. Uh, again, black, good adjustable ear loops. You can get this in the US. I have the link in the, in the Google doc. So go scroll down to the find today's, the latest mass testing. It's in the Google Doc there, the LG Air Washer, where you can get it from in black. I also have an international source. I ordered some from there that came legit. I can't promise you that will always be the case. I know there's a lot of people that don't live in the U.S. that are like, I need masks. So if you're in Germany or in Sweden, wherever, they have an international source that you can get them from. I cannot, of course, guarantee that that will always be good. It's basically like the eBay of Korea, which I don't, you know how I feel about eBay, but I know people in, in other countries can't get a hold of these. So I wanted to provide that as an option. So there's my top picks for the large face sizes. Okay, the future of mask wearing. I have seen it, I have felt it, I like it. Where do I think they're going? Boom, this mask right here. I think this is really the future of mask wearing. Um, it has a printed pattern, it's protective, it's the boat style, it's everything I like in a face mask. Um, this came out of Mask Lab, it's a Korean company. The print quality is amazing on these. Um, color matched ear string, or the ear loops. I mean, this is where I think masks go. So, why do people like a lot of cloth masks? They like them because they're stylish. They have cool designs on them. They have all these things that they like. But what if you can combine the stylishness and the coolness of the cloth mask space with the protective mask space, and that's where you end up. And I think this will be the future of masks, that you're gonna see a lot more cool designs, colors, and stuff like this, which really makes them much more fashionable, less, you know, sort of sterile and occupational looking, and much more, you know, more likely people to wear them. This mask actually tested really good. They're very reasonably priced. I'll cover them in the full description, but you can also get them internationally or here in the US. So pretty excited about this. I think you're gonna see more and more colors and more and more stuff like this. Pretty excited. This is the future of masks. Also got my hands on some Atiquas. When the, when, they, when, the, when the risk of COVID goes down a little bit, I think we'll have a little bit more leniency in our filtration efficiency, but these bifold masks, I think will also be coming back around. Uh, really nice quality. I didn't review them a ton in this video because I think we're gonna talk more about them after we see the sort of like second or whatever third wave we're on. Uh, right now, I think we wanna focus on really protective masks, but these masks are really nice, really high quality. And I think we're gonna see some of this along with the printing stuff. So that is where I see the future of masks going. I just wanna give you a preview of what I see, but man, I think this is such a cool mask. Um, I, I showed them to my wife. She thought they were super cool. It's really cool to have like, I mean, maybe this isn't designed isn't exactly my style. You know, the floral pattern isn't quite, quite me, but I think it's cool to have a design like this, to have really high quality, vibrant printed colors. Very cool, I gotta give them credit for that. And they actually performed really well in my test. 
Okay, my test aerosol versus COVID versus NIOSH test standards. So my test aerosol, I do in a room, I have an ultrasonic, or not an ultrasonic, sorry, a pneumatic atomizer, the TSI 3076, I think. I'll put the little star there. I can never remember that off the top of my head. I use a 16% sodium chloride solution. And effectively what I generate is a 64, nan 64 nanometer count median diameter aerosol. I'll throw up a nano scan. I did some nano scan data a few videos back that shows the size distribution of my aerosol. So why does that matter? Well, it turns out that particle size has an impact on the filtration efficiency. And depending on what particle size you use, you're gonna get different results. Um, my test aerosol is what I would consider on the small side. Not gonna argue, not gonna lie. That's the reality of the situation. It's just gated by the equipment that I had available to me. Do I think that it's wrong or that it doesn't provide meaningful value? No, I think it does. You just have to put a little star next to it and say, it's my test aerosol to my face. That's just what I always say. Um, I think it still provides us a distinction between masks which are good and which are bad, but that's a, that is a caveat to it. So my tester also is a 64 nanometer count median diameter uh, aerosol. Uh, I can't remember the geometric standard deviation, but I'll put it down there in a the little star. Uh, and relative to the NIOSH test standard, so the NIOSH test standard has a similar size. So they use actually a 75 nanometer count median diameter aerosol with a 1.86 geometric standard deviation for that, the curve of that, that distribution. So I put my thing, like, you know, it's just the shape of that profile. Um, what does this all mean? Well, NIOSH uses a gravimetric system, a mass-based system. So effectively what they're really doing is they're testing at 240. So I'm, to make people's lives easy, you know, I, I never dumb down these videos. I'll tell you at the full scientific level, but I'll try to summarize it in a more meaningful manner. I'm testing at 60, effectively NIOSH tests at 240. And what is COVID? Well, COVID is somewhere between probably a half a micron to 10, 20, 30 micron. So what does that mean in terms of like filtration efficiency and the number of giving? There's actually a good paper out there that had looked at the electrostatic, like a common N95, and they actually measured the filtration efficiency or one minus that is also referred to as the penetration of electrostatic media. I'll throw it up here. And what they found is that for m many medias, uh, in the case here, you see two, this is respirator A and respirator B. They don't tell you exactly who they are using, but these are the two respirators that they tested. What they found for these two respirators is that the you know kind of peak filtration or the peak penetration or basically one minus the filtration one the particle size that can I make it through the mass easy is in this kind of 40 50 60 nanometer particle size guess where I test you know 60 nanometer so I'm actually testing for most electrostatic media at near the worst possible size that's not necessarily a bad thing because what it means is that I'm testing at the worst case condition so my argument is that my tests which is uses the 64 nanometer sodium chloride salt is that I'm gonna test at the worst case condition. So masks that don't filter well are gonna show poor. And I also have this issue that I test as an as-worn mask. So the air is gonna go around the mask. Meaning effectively the numbers I'm getting are like the worst case. I mean, certainly for my, it's for my face fit, but they're certainly the worst case conditions, which means that it goes through the mask quite easily. Uh, so we'll use this as an example here. So the, so the particles are gonna go through this mask quite easily because they're not filtered at the same, the same rate. And because I'm wearing it as I have it fit, I'm gonna have some leakage going around the mask and that's gonna result in even a reduction. So my argument is that my test is kind of the worst case condition. It's certainly not um, you know, the same as the NIOSH test standard. I've never argued that it is. I think it's, I feel based on my own work, that it is an effective metric to compare mass and provide some level of metric of how well they filter. Is it perfect? No. Is my pressure drop measurement perfect? No. It is an okay test. If I was to try to publish this work, I would have to do a lot more work into looking at neutralized aerosols, and I would need some more equipment that I just really can't afford to buy because there are tens of thousands of dollars to do these videos. Um, but I think my test does highlight mass that are, don't work. So I can resolve generally a range of masks. I can certainly resolve a, a poor mask or fake mask to a real mask. And I feel like the test that I'm showing you is kind of the worst case condition, meaning that if the number that you see there, if relative to a COVID aerosol, which is much bigger, about 500 nanometers. So if I put that plot back up, remember we look at that plot and we go all the way to the side here, that's 600 nanometers. Notice that it is at nearly the same, you know, it's at 5% at, you know, with a 30, 85 liter per minute result at, at about 50 nanometers. And then by the time you get over to 600 nanometers, it's nearly back to unity or basically a hundred, or not unity, but nearly zero. Basically like a really high filtration efficiencies at a half a micron, which is the smallest size that we'd expect to see some COVID. So these masks are gonna do, what I'm showing, the number I'm showing is gonna be that number or much better. Uh, and it depends on the leakage. So I think it's a good metric. I think I'm pretty good at identifying which masks are. It is not a perfect method. I do not do duplicates. I do 
statistical analysis. I don't replicate, or I don't repeat my experiments. I don't have statistical analysis or air propagation and all these other things that you would need to do. Um, and mostly it's just a time and issue of trying to test a lot of masks quickly to identify people where to get them. So I think I can identify a, a good mask in my test. So that's where that comes from. Okay, so the next topic we wanna to cover is the frequently asked questions of COVID. Uh, those questions include, do, fil do face mask filter smells? The answer is no, they do not. Uh, most smells are, you know, single or couple molecules big. They're in the kind of vapor phase. We call them like volatile organic compounds or all kinds of other things. And they're very small molecules. And I won't go into the like free molecular regime filtration and masks and all this stuff, but basically face masks can't filter that. We usually have to use like carbon material and absorbent material or sorbent material to like suck this, basically like suck the smells into these faces. Uh, and so what you're gonna find is that face masks do not filter most smells. So if you walk into a kitchen or worse, the restroom, you will certainly notice an intense odor because it's weird because you're wearing that face mask, you, you know, your breath is warm and humid, plus you get the intense smell of like you're in a restroom, you'll notice it. Doesn't mean the mask isn't working, just means that these masks will not filter smells. You need a special mask to do that. Sometimes we call them gas masks. Uh, sometimes they have carbon layered materials inside there to absorb the gas smell so you won't smell it. But in general, they will not filter smells. What about the blow test or the water test? We've seen these early in the pandemic. People are trying to identify face masks using the blow test and the water test. The answer to your question is they're only identify whether you can blow through a mask and whether it holds water. Doesn't mean anything for filtration efficiency. So to my right here, I have a mask that I filled up with water. Now this video actually took me a couple edits to, or a couple shots to make. So I got even more than my first take at this. Um, I took a, the POW, uh, Bonafide POWCOM, the actual one I test, if you look, there's actually the, you can maybe see the test port inside of there. This is the actual mask I test. I plugged the test port uh, and then covered it with duct tape so it wasn't leaking through the test port. I filled it with water, I let it sit for a while, and what do you see on the bottom of that glass? Water. So this is a legit, known good POWCOM. I tested it like 97% filtration efficiency, it works, but it leaks water. What does it tell you? The water test doesn't mean anything. It just tells you if a, if a filter can hold water. I'll talk more about why they came about, but that they don't mean anything. I'll do another experiment. This is the ill wool uh, hygienic mask. This is the mask that does not have any filtration media in it. It's basically like a KF, it's a boat style mask with no filtration media. So just the, just the melt blown layers, which makes it really easy to breathe. And can you blow out a candle? Yeah, of course, <sighs> pretty easy. And people were trying to use this method. But the question is, what if I use like a real KF94? Can I do it? The answer is yes, although I have to usually do it a couple times because it's hard to get the first try. But and I don't like to edit video, so we're gonna do it live. All right. So the question is: This is a this is a LG air washer came from the same lot that'll present the test data after here, which is like 99 plus percent filtration efficiency. So this is a legit mask. Can I blow this out? The answer is. Oh come on! I get it today. It takes me a couple tries. There we go. See, I can, blow out a, I can blow out a flame with my legit KF94. So is the flame test meaningful? No, this mask I've tested, I've used. Now it's of course much harder to do than the other mask because it doesn't breathe as easy. It's really just what we're measuring is the air permeability. How well does air go through the mask uh, when I blow on it to blow out a flame? And there's more restriction with masks with media. I'll try it one more time. Hey, look at that. Does it mean that the mask is fake? No, it doesn't at all. It just means that you can blow out a candle with it. The reason this came about is because early in the pandemic, a manufacturer could make a mask that looks like this. It looks just like a KF94 and they skipped the filtration media because that's the expensive part or maybe they couldn't source it. So they wouldn't put it in there and the mask would breathe really easy and you could easily pour water through or blow a candle out. And so what people were doing was comparing, does it have the filter media? The reality though is if you're a fake mask maker or even a legit mask maker, those tests don't mean anything. You can make a fake mask not do that by taking like a really high weight melt bone that's not electrostatic, stick it in there. It'll be hard to breathe. It won't really provide you much protection, but it'll pass the water and candle test. So in the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything. It just means whether they can support water or blow out a candle. It's not a good metric of performance. That's why I started the testing that I've done here because I realized very quickly, like that doesn't mean anything when we shouldn't be using it. Um, so here's your legit KF94 or POWCOM mask and it leaks water. So no, they don't mean anything and I wouldn't recommend them. The other question we get is, do we need to sanitize masks? Uh, in terms of COVID, I don't think it's really necessary. And I'll try to explain my logic. I'm not an epidemiologist or a virologist or really in the medical field at all. So it's my perspective of it. And other people might have other opinions and I'd love to hear them. But basically here's my concept. The, the virus itself will die on its own. It doesn't survive forever. 
In fact, the CDC has like a calculator. You can calculate roughly what they estimate the half-life on. It's kind of some rough data. It's not perfect, but we can use it as a starting point. But basically like 99% of the virus dies in like four days on a mask. So in my perspective, it's just a good idea to have quite a few masks. If it has some on there, you just put it back into the pouch. This is what I do. Can't, doesn't mean it's perfect. I'm not, a, you know, I put it back in the pouch and it's open to air. I let it sit for four days and then I'll wear it again. So I cycle through on a three to four days basis with masks so that when I come back to it four days later, 90, most of the virus is all dead. I didn't have to spray anything on it. You do not want to spray either water, soapy water, hydrogen peroxide, bleach, hand sanitizer, anything on electrostatic masks like this. Do not sanitize them, do not spray them. That's why I like just the sit in the bag approach because you don't need to sanitize them with something that could damage the electric meeting. There are some masks like the Air Queen, the Air Queen Breeze, which I'll talk more about, that you can do that with. But again, that's the exception, not the rule. These masks do not do that. So how can we sanitize the mask? Just let them sit, it's so much more easier. You don't have to have these complicated things. You don't need to buy a fancy UVC box. In my opinion, you don't need any of that. Just let them sit for four to five days, three, four, five. I, you know, it depends on how risk averse you wanna be. And then it'll self sanitize for COVID. Now, it doesn't mean that other bacteria and other stuff can't live on that mask, but I think we're all wearing these masks to avoid the one really dangerous thing, which is COVID. So I think from my perspective, I don't feel like you need to sanitize them. It adds a lot of complexity. And then people are gonna ask, well, does UVC damage it? Well, we don't know. Does hydrogen peroxide, what if I put it in my pressure pot? And you'll find a bunch of studies that people were doing where they're trying to decontaminate N95s. Understand the perspective. I think we're beyond that now for general population masks. You can buy a box of 10 of KF94s for like 30 bucks and just cycle them through on a three to four day basis. You can wear them for 40 hours. Previous video cover that. You know, there's no reason in my opinion to sanitize. Reviews. I'm gonna go do a little bit of outer order than was shown on the data table. I'm gonna start with one of the most interesting masks that I had to test of uh, this week, and then we'll kind of go through the more kind of we'll say average masks <laughs> to say a lack of a better word. They're, they're protective. They're just there's a lot of KF masks out there. They're black. They have you know same kind of similar features. But we'll test them and, and walk through that. But to me, I want to start with this one. This is the Mask Lab. They're out of Hong Kong. I think in previous in the video I had messed that up and said South Korea. It's Hong Kong. Um, you know, you saw me talk about it. This is the actual one I tested. You see the test port. I'm gonna test a few more of these before they make it into my recommendation chart because I wanna make sure that this isn't just a one test happened to show that it's high. Um, I'd like to test a few more because they call this a KF style. These are not a KF94 rated mask because they're coming out of Taiwan. They're just a boat style mask. So I wanna do a little bit more due diligence on testing them, but super cool. I mean, the print quality is amazing. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Like, it's really sharp. I, I picked this mask because it had a bunch of lines. Let me get it back to my face. It had a bunch of lines and features and I was, you know, it's good. Uh, you know, they do the, you know, the details are kind of there too. Like they have the paneling of this kind of teal color and then they matched the ear loops to the same color. Like that's a pretty nice detail. They could have used a white ear loop or a black ear loops or something. Um, but to go and match that, eh, you know, it's good detail. I like, I like a thing with detail. They use a stiff, good stiff nose wire in it. It's maybe a little shorter than I would like. Um, it's only about 75 millimeters. You know, a few extra millimeters I think would make a difference in just getting a little bit better seal on the nose. Um, and I tested, uh, I tested it on, I got 98.1% filtration efficiency, so excellent. But here's the kicker, at 0.15 inches of pressure drop, this gives it a quality factor that's on par with the 3M media. That's really impressive. I gotta give due, due diligence, you know, or gotta give credit where it's due. That's impressive. I'm really, I mean, and and it's not a super stiff mask. I was, but I don't get any, I don't get any um, mask collapse because the pressure drops so low. So I get a little suck in, but it doesn't make it to my lips. Um, so you know, it's a little, it's on the smaller side at 190. Um, you know, my only like my only complaint is just the nose wire. If it was just a few millimeters wider, um, but for most people, they aren't going to know this. And the only other thing is it's kind of a, a base model, right? So they got the printing, but they don't have adjustable ear loops. Um, so you know, it'd be nice if like this mask printed adjustable ear loops, a little stiffer, longer nose wire. It would take the cake any day of the weeks. That media is really good though. So I'm going to test a few more of these. It'll probably make it onto my recommendation chart in the next video. Um, but I want to test a few more to make sure that the quality is there. Okay, I always have to get asked to do it, so I'll just do it as part of this video because I'm, I'm sure we'll have some new, I have a bunch of new subscribers, uh, so welcome. Uh, they always ask, hey, you know, I got this surgical mask A or surgical mask B, I think they're really good, are they good? And the answer is probably not, not because the media isn't good. They might have a really high quality surgical mask, it's just that they leak. So this is the filter surgical mask, you can get them at Costco. 
I tested it, I got a whopping 11%. This isn't surprising. This, this mask does not fit my face very well. I have a huge opening right here. So when I'm breathing in, almost all the air is coming right in and out of here and through here. So it basically doesn't provide any filtration, filtration or any filtration efficiency because the air just goes around the mask. So if I took it and went like this, I got 91%. So good media and you know good build quality, but it highlights that surgical masks just are never going to protect you because the air is going to go around the mask, not through the mask. So just to highlight it there. Okay, the next mask up is the Filthy NF95. Now I'm going to knock them because I hate that name. I wish we would stop using words that are like N95. And NF95 is like too close to it. So I'm not a big fan of the name, but good quality. I'm so far, I'm impressed. So this is a US-based manufacturer. They're using media, I believe out of NXT Nano. It's a company out of Colorado, uh, or sorry, Oklahoma, excuse me, Oklahoma. Um, so the, uh, the, it's a boat style mask made in the US. Uh, they're using, it's, it's a thick, it's thick. It's got a lot of layers to it. It's very similar to a KF, many of the KF94 masks that we have talked about. Uh, the only difference I kind of observe in terms of a manufacturing thing is that like all the layers are visible. Like they don't heat seam the perimeter or the edges of this. So you have like a bunch of loose layers here. Long term, that might be a little bit of an issue. It's hard to see on camera, but you can kind of see all the layers. Um, so long term, that could be a little bit of an issue, but you know, for right now it's fine. Uh, filtration efficiency. Now I tested this mask twice um, just because I had a little bit of problem with the nose seal and I was, I didn't want to give it the best best test possible. I don't want a bunch of leakage. So I tested it twice. I got 90.8 the first time I tested it again. And then I just really focused on getting that nose bridge and just seat it all and tighten up the ear loops good and tight. So I got 93.2. So, you know, it's good. And this is a not a electro, this is a, this is a nanopore material, nanofilter material. So it's not electrostatic. So it's always going to really struggle uh, with this particle size, but they did actually pretty good. So let's say that 93.2, uh, 0.1 inch, pressure drop. So actually that's really breathable. It's probably one of the more breathable masks we have. That's on par with that mass lab that I showed. So it's really breathable, uh, no collapse, and it has a 14 on the quality factor. So it's up there with the KF94. So I'm impressed. So, so they did a good job, US based, reasonably priced. You know, the only thing I noticed is that the, the, the nose wire could be a little stiffer. I'm, I like a good stiff nose wire. And the projection, these bottom and top flaps are a little bit longer than most KFs. I'm not sure exactly how to measure that. I've been trying to think about how I'm gonna measure that in the future. I just noticed that. So it's gonna handle people with a little bit more projection in their face. Price-wise, I think uh, they're 20, 25 bucks or something like that. These were sent to me by someone who had already bought them. So I'm just testing them out. I don't have any lot information or anything like that. Again, pictures, you can find all that stuff um, on the Google Drive link. And Google is not a sponsor of this video, uh, but I am on their platform. So thank, I guess they're, Thank YouTube. Uh, all right, other big one. I get this one all the time because historically I've not been a huge fan of the uh, Air Queen Nano, mostly because it was protective. And if I had to wear a mask and that was that or a cloth mask, I'd pick the Air Queen any day of the week. It's just not my favorite. It doesn't have a lot of the features, but they've come on with a follow-up, the Air Queen Breeze mask. Now this is an FFP2 certified mask. Um, so which is kind of unique. Uh, and so that means that, you know, it's going to meet some quality metrics. Now I tested it. Uh, I got 94.1%. Uh, well, I tested it first just as worn 93.2. I really want to do my due diligence to make sure I was really, it's a nice, it's to me, this is a good mask to like, as a, add as a control mask. Uh, it's nice to have like these kind of range of values to test out repeatedly of my, how repeatable my system is. Um, so I, I held it against my face to make sure I got all seals and I got up to 94.1. So it meaning I think it had a really good face seal. So I think that's a real number, 93.1 to 94, somewhere around there. Um, so filtration efficiency is good. Pressure drop at about 0.3. I remember my pressure drop measurement is kind of crappy, but you know, it gives us a range of values. I got some partial collapse. So a quality factor of 9.5. So, you know, it's, it's a protective mask. I'm guessing that they changed the media a little bit to get that FFP2 rating. So good for them for that. There's some nice things. They do have it printed right on the mask. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus, focus. Ooh, they do have it printed right on the mask that is an FFP2 rated mask. Um, and then the other thing is that the instructions are a little bit different. So this, I'm guessing to get that FFP2 rating, they had to uh, use the note, the mask clip. Let's see if I can get it out here. Oh, or I, or I lost it. Oh, I might've lost it. My apologies. Well, normally, oh, no, it is in there. I think it's where I put it in there. See, I don't edit these videos. They give you a mask clip. And on the instructions they do now, inst they instruct for this mask to use the nose clip. And I'm not too surprised by that. And the reason being is because I'm gonna guess to get that FFP2 rating, because there's some other tests, of internal leakage tests, kind of like I talked about the KF94. Um, to get that, they needed a really good face seal to, to make sure, because I'm guessing the media is just, you know, it's just, it's, it's good media. It's just when you use the nanopore material, it's just the electrostatic has a little, is still the better media right now, I think. 
it has some other disadvantages, like in terms of life and stuff like that. So this has some advantages, but uh, yeah, I won't go too much in more detail there. But anyways, it's a, it's a protective mask. If you're in Europe and you can source them, I would wear that over probably, you know, if you're like, had to choose a KN, the random KN or one of these, I'd probably go these. Um, so, you know, they're, they're a protective mask. They got the FFP certification, so good for them. I know, you know, it's a good option. It's not my, if I can get this thing off, it's not my favorite only because, you know, there's a few things that I like when I'm talking about masks and I'm spoiled kid, right? I'm spoiled. It's not black. Oh, it doesn't have adjustable ear loops, you know? So I, it's hard. Most people that watch this channel kind of are the same way. They want to see to get the best mask or maybe they're new to mass and they're learning and maybe they, they had some of these and they're like, oh, are they good? And they get some here and we talk about masks. So I'm okay with that. So are they protective? Yes. Are they my favorite masks? Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to make them my favorite, but they are protective nonetheless. Okay, let's jump into some, uh, the last one that I think is really interesting. Next up is the Bot in Black. Um, I spent some time looking at it, comparing the Bot in White. Like they are, I think, identical. I think that just the fabric color change, which is kind of what you would expect. Um, no real changes in terms of fit or anything like that. Still use a good, nice, stiff nose wire for this particular mask. I ended up with 99.6% filtration efficiency. I had really good performance on it. I could, and, and it's kind of unfair because I wear this mask myself all the time. So I'm pretty good at getting it fitted and getting it all dialed. And I double ear looped it for that test. So uh, there is that to be disclosed. Uh, I ended up with a pressure drop of about 0.33 inches of water, no, part, no uh, mask collapse. So I got a quality factor of 15.8. So kind of all the, seems like all the Q, all the KF94 masks are kind of in this like in the 15, the teens to the 20 range. Um, uh, it's definitely the biggest mask that you're going to fi find out there. 203. I think the only one bigger now is the Korea mask, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Um, but I'm not sure if, if fit wise, they're actually that much different because they, of how they do the strapping on the Korea mask. So definitely one of the biggest masks out there. So if you have a big face, start here. If you don't have a big face, you might find this mask too big. So that's why I kind of split it up over time to be like, if you got a big face, how do you know if you have a big face? I, I, that's the question. That's the million dollar question. There's some sites out there like Be Healthy. I think also uh, Everyday Beauty Lab. You can order a few of them at a time. I would start there. Just order a couple of whatever sizes. Try it for different sizes on. I think Be Healthy even has a mix and match. You can buy like 10 different versions. So start there if you're not sure about sizing. Um, otherwise, it's still my recommended pick. I, love, I like the button, button myself. I wear it. I like the black. It even makes it better. One of the new ones that I was trying to source on an international reason or international perspective is the um, LG Air Washer Black. Now this is also now available black. I really like this mask when I found the white. When I was getting them last time, they were like 350 a mask. So I was kind of like, eh, they're a little spendy for that. But um, prices have come down a little bit on these. So this is the LG Air Washer Black, also recommended for large faces. 99.1 um, filtration efficiency, 0.3 inch pressure drop, no max collapse. So I ended up with a, with a, uh, a QF of 15.8, which is exactly the same as the button. That's kind of funny. Um, it's definitely on the larger size. The big prominent thing on this is like what I could, you know, you'll add, I have the, the uh, nose wire stiffness and length included, but this has its own category of mega stiff. Like this is like the stiffest nose wire I've found to date. And it's the longest 85. So it's the stiffest nose wire and the longest second longest nose wire that I've tested so far. Um, so I got it, you know, that's, I really like this mask. Um, so from the U S option, everyday beauty had it, but I also was trying to source for an international option. I get a lot of questions from people that are living in Europe or all over the world. Uh, and, and they're having trouble sourcing mass, or at least they're concerned about quality mass. So I did add a link to a international option. So if you go to the Google doc link, it's to G market, G market is kind of like the eBay of Korea. So there is some risk. I qualify, I, I ordered a box from there. I tested them. They tested good. They look exactly like the stuff I got from everyday beauty lab. Um, so they look good. Everything looks, seems legit. So if you're in an international space, I would go that route. If you're in the domestic space, just buy it from the known vendor here. It's way easier and it's actually cheaper in the end anyways, but I'm trying to help out for the international space. I know there's a lot of people that are trying to get masks. I hear questions about it all the time. So I'm trying to help with that. Okay. Uh, let's move on to some of the uh, more generic options. I think there's a lot of, you know, people who ask for different price points and different designs. So let's get into the other options. We're going to go from the top of the list. So we're going to go back into the proper order of how I laid it out in the thing. We're going to cover the KF series here. I got to make sure to grab them all. We'll get them. Okay. So uh, blue came out in the English language. I like the blue for a small mask. It's kind of your base model, but great filtration efficiency. It came in at 99.4% filtration efficiency, 0.28 pressure up. I'm going to get a little bit of mask collapse because I can feel it suck in. Uh, gives a QF of 18.2. So again, it's like one of, you know, it's good. It's, it's all the all the QFs seem to be in the high teens into the 20s. It's a smaller mask. 
than most. Uh, so smaller faces, you know, moderately stiff nose bridge, but they're, but the reason I still recommend them is that they're coming to be really cheap. Be Healthy had 100 for 160, and they always seem to be healthy, they always seem to have some discount. So I think they're going 30% off right now. So I mean, you're talking like less than, you know, getting close to a dollar a mask at a box of 100, like that is getting cheap. I mean, this is awesome. I'm excited to see mask prices coming down. I like these, they came with an English package now, so that's why I tested it. And I think that's good, it helps people understand what they're buying and that it says large and you don't have to know the Korean symbol for large. So uh, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, order some of these, these are the Evergreen. These are available from uh, B Everyday Beauty Lab as well as a Yes Mask. I put the links in there. This design is a little bit different than most. Uh, I mean, it's basically a boat style mask, which you know, everyone knows I like, but it's really like long and, and pretty pretty tall. Like a lot of them are trimming the edges to try to make them look a little thinner, right? But they just went, hey, we're just gonna go fixed width. So uh, this mask performed excellent. Uh, I used it with a mask clips that it came with because the ear loops are like super long. So this one comes with a mask clip in it. So I think it's kind of actually encouraging based on the length of the ear loops and everything that they're encouraging a mask clip use. So I went ahead and use it. Um, but I ended up with uh, pretty high filtration efficiency on it. So uh, let's see, sorry, I'm trying to read my own notes here. Evergreen, yep, 99.5, 0.35 inch pressure drop uh, with, and I get a little partial collapse. It doesn't have a ton of projection on this mask. So it's really big, but it doesn't stick out very far. Uh, so it's pretty close to my mouth. 18.2 uh, on the quality factor, so it's good. I mean, it's really protective. And with the nose clips, um, moderately stiff, w decently good nose wire, right? It's, it's 80, so it's pretty good. It's getting most of my nose bridge and it's pretty stiff. And with 99 for, you know, really good filtration efficiency. So good mask. I used it with mask clips. Can you do it with ears? Yes, it's black, but it doesn't have adjustable ear loops. So you'll have to tie them off. So that's why it doesn't quite make it in my recommendation category is, you know, you can get the bot and the bot has adjustable ear loops, it's black and it has similar protection. So, but, uh, but depending on the price and, and some people in the international space might find these available to them. So if they're curious about if they're protective or not and what the packaging looks like, again, go to the Google Drive link. You can see images of my package and the lot number. I'll probably put the lot number in the talk when the discussion too, but, um, Mostly that's uh, what's that about. So also a couple other masks that are kind of interesting. Uh, some more KF94s that are out of Be Healthy. We'll start with the medium. These are the Korea mask. Uh, kind of an interesting design. So I, you know, from a mask measurement, I always measure from ear loop to ear loop, um, which in this mask kind of makes it strange because there's this like huge cutout right here. So it almost is like the ear loop is projected beyond the mask. Cause if you like, look, there's a seamed section here. So it's almost like the mask is extending it further on here. So. I found that the actually the medium in this mask fit me better than the large. So the medium I got 99.1%, 0.3 inch pressure drop, I got partial collapse. It's in the 16, 15.8 for the quality factor. So that's, you know, pretty typical for a KF mask. Uh, stiff nose wire and it's pretty wide, pretty long, 85. So they did a good job on the nose wire and I noticed that right away. My only complaint is that there's not a ton of projection on the medium. Ear loop wise, I had to tighten it just a little bit, even on the medium. So I'm tightening ear loops on the medium mask. Uh, so, you know, that's, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's hard. This one's going to be a fit a different face profile. So I, I'm not, sh I'm not sure yet what the recommendation for face is. I got to try this one on. I have a few more that I'm going to wear myself. Um, so the medium is, is good, but not a lot of projection. And then I go to the large and this is the, this is the, uh, the Korean mask large. All right, my camera battery died there, so we're back. So the the Korean mask large, now this is a much larger mask. Same thing, same profile cutout, not adjustable ear loops. And you can notice how much I shorten up these ear loops because this is a big mask. So the ear loop to ear loop measurement, which is what I have always done, which maybe isn't a perfect way to do this, but is what I've been doing. Uh, this one is huge at 218. It's the biggest mask. Again, stiff nose, Brit, nose wire, um, 83 millimeters length that's stiff, so it's, it's really good. Uh, but this is just a, it's a big mask. I, you know, I'm still, like I said, I'm still work, trying to think about like, so I think I'm going to say like, if you're at a button and the button's too small for you still, this might be the mask for you. Um, it is, a, it's big. I mean, you can see how much projection it has. I mean, there's very little distance to my ear. Not a ton of, not a ton of projection out of the, at the end of the mask. It's still pretty close to my face. Um, and, you know, in terms of the large, I saw 99.4, still roughly the same pressured up 0.3 inches. So it's a quality factor of 17. So very similar. So, um, so these are, these are good. I think, um, price wise are pretty good. Again, you might find these in other places. Um, so I think we're kind of looking at, you know, some different price points. Um, 
I think it's going to be good for, so I still got to work on this a little bit and wear these myself, but my, my, I think my recommendation is going to be like, if a button's too small for you, you might need to look at, at this size here. Okay, um, Pure Blue, this was uh, sent to me by um, uh, a viewer who had sent me a bunch of masks. These are available from K Markets. Uh, they're like a Korean uh, store in California. I'm not from California, so I didn't know that, but you can buy these right there at the K Market. And he was curious if they're any good. Um, so the Pure Blue LF is a size large. I got 96% um, filtration efficiency, 0.35 inch pressure drop. So, you know, the media quality is on the lower end, 9.2 for the QF. So it's, you know, it's not great. It's got a, yeah, it's kind of, it's not a, it's not a well-breathing mask, uh, 188 millimeters. So it's kind of on the same order as the blue, um, moderate stiffness on the road. But again, it's only about 74 millimeters wide. So a little wider would I think helped a little bit more in terms of just comfort for me. Um, I get partial mask collapse. So it's not... It kind of sucks to my lips, but it's not like staying there, like like say they like the Dr. Peary or something. Um, I'm not sure how much they cost exactly, but if you're in you know California or as the governor would say California, um, these might be a good option for you. Or if you're like if you need a mask in an emergency, or or yeah, you just want to buy some and you don't have to order from some website, that might be a good option. I'm not sure where else there are K markets. Um, so if there are some other in the you know the West Coast, there this is a good option. Is the Pure Blue again? Pictures, lot of information, all that's on the Google Drive. Um, some other masks that are available uh, from a variety of sources. I think there are also Everyday Beauty Lab. Yes, mask is the We Care, um, and this is a size large. The We Care. Uh, I'm going out of order, so I'm not a good listener. So apparently, I lied about doing this in the right order. Maybe I'll just adjust my table, and then no one will ever understand what I was talking about. But oh well, I'll have to edit it later. Okay, so the uh, the the We Care KF94 uh, size large. I can read Korean now. That that size means large. I've, I've learned that now. Uh, so this is a size large. 99.5% um, filtration efficiency, 0.28 uh, pressure drop. So I got a, a, Q, uh, a QF of 19.1. So that's really good. Um, it's 190. So it's kind of like in between a button. It's kind of more on the um, LG air washer size. Um, and so we're kind of, yeah, we're kind of like 190 range. Uh, good stiff nose wire. Uh, it's a little on the short side, 73. I would have liked to see that like 80, 85, 90, something in that range. Um, so it's a little short side, but if this is something that you kind of run across and price-wise is good, they're good. They don't have adjustable ear loops. They're all, I only see them available in white, but they might have other colors. But again, it highlights every time I test a KF94, they show up good. I mean, if you're getting straight stuff from straight from South Korea from good vendors, you know, it's it just kind of blows my mind that there's so much, you know, it, all these masks are really good quality. Many mask also available from Yes Mask. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody has it, but again, links are in the Google Doc now. So Google Doc, go to that, scroll the bot, scroll, find the today's test. It'll be by the date. Um, uh, Many mask comes available in white ear loop. Uh, it's kind of a thicker material. It's almost like a it's almost like a Dr. Peary in terms of the material thickness uh, or thickness. Well, it's actually maybe a little thicker than a Dr. Peary, but kind of that soft material. Uh, 99.2% filtration efficiency, 0.25 inch pressure drop. So I got another quality factor of 19. Uh, so that's good, 198. So it's kind of on the bottom size. It is definitely a noticeably big mask. I noticed that it has pretty good projection. I do get mask collapse that comes like right, you know, it's, it's partial. It comes back out, it comes back out, right? So it doesn't like, it doesn't stay against my mouth, but, but I do get some mask collapse. Um, this one actually has a really long nose wire. I got to give him credit for that. It's fairly stiff, but really nice and long. And so for me right away, I was really comfortable in that just purely because that nose wire. So that might be a me only thing. I, I'm not sure. Um, I just notice it because it just, it helps to seal against the nose area. And it's just so much easier. And then it, it holds your face better when you have that stiff nose wire. So I, I kind of exaggerate my jaw movements. So I, I think they're a good mask. I mean, I think if I had to choose between a doctor purity and this, I'd go this route. Um, I'm not sure price-wise where they're at, but, you know, good on. Again, another KF94 mask comes out of Korea. Good mask. Okay, I think, uh, I think that is, is that everything? I think that is everything. Well, if I forgot one, I'll have to edit it in. So if you see the screen changing and you'll know my editing skills aren't very good. Okay, well, thank you very much for hanging around, watching another, you know, 35 minutes or 40 minutes of some guy talk about face masks. Um, as usual, if you have questions, throw them in the comments. If you want to see more mask videos, you can subscribe. If, uh, if it's back to me riding, if you see uh, some guy running around in a muddy field on his bicycle, you know the pandemic's over. 
Um, what is upcoming? What is coming up next? Okay, so coming up next will be uh, I have a bunch of American masks that I've been I've reached out to some American. Actually, yeah, I was featured in a Yahoo News article, which was really awesome because it started giving me contacts to people that are making them in the U.S. So they had contacted me. I'd reach out to them, and I kind of say, "Hey, I'm you know this dude doing mask testing." Um, so that's really cool. So I got a bunch of U.S. made masks coming, and I kind of feature those. As part of that, I'm going to discuss like what is the issue in the U.S. in terms of our regulation by having only a NIOSH N95 level. I don't know what they get a certified to for general population masks. There's a discussion about, you know, ASTM doing some mass testing and qualification, but they're talking like 50% filtration efficiency. So it's like there's this huge gap between 50 and 95 that's completely unoccupied. So this is going to be an issue. I'll be testing a bunch of those. I have the, um, the Powcom Black. Got my hand on some of those. So that is super cool. So I'll be testing the Powercom Black. I'll be testing two more of the Mass Lab masks. I want to see if they're consistent in quality. If they are, they're going to get my recommendation. Um... And yeah, so that will be probably in a couple of weeks. It'll take me a few weeks to get all of that put together, shoot a video, answer a bunch of comments, all this stuff. So uh, thanks very much for hanging out. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.